this matter um, was involved a breach of contract claim by the former chairman, company secretary, and chief financial officer of a mining company. He'd originally entered into a contract which was for a five-year term and then had um, an option that he could renew it on substantially the same terms. There were a lot of terms agreed in the contract, including pay increases, etc., and the manner in which the uh, contract um, would be played out over the perceived or the intended term. Um, a couple of years into the contract, about three years into the contract, two years into the contract, his employment was terminated immediately, purportedly, summarily, due to allegations of um, serious misconduct related to dishonesty. There are a couple of issues before the court, and it was found that this was um, a, a, an improper termination, not in accordance with the contract, um, which was a, a significant issue. But the, the main issue that in this uh, second decision that the court had to consider is what were the appropriate damages for breach of contract given that this had occurred. There had been a clause in the, uh, in the contract that said specifically that if his contract was terminated without proper cause, he was entitled to have five years' salary paid to him, which was in effect a clause setting out liquidated damages. Um, ultimately, the court found that that was legitimate. It wasn't a penalty. Um, and therefore, he was entitled not only to the remainder of his first term, but payments for the second term of his contract, which overall was a substantial amount of money. Yeah, I think the really interesting thing in this case, and it is a bit unusual because of the contractual terms, um, is why the employer entered into a fixed term contract mm. with that option to renew. Um, certainly, a lot of employers seem to mistakenly think that fixed term contracts are going to tie employees down and they're going to have to stay with you which isn't the case, and really a lot of the time those sorts of contracts are not in their favour and certainly having an option to renew is in the employee's favour. Um, yes, sometimes the option can be in the employer's favour, yes. you understand that, but when you have a situation where specific performance will not generally be awarded against an employee, so you can't force them to stay under the contract, the benefits are just not there. The only possible reason would be if someone was considered so valuable that the only way you could entice them into it was a fixed term contract. Yeah. But really 10 years in effect here is a, is a lot of fixed term contract. I think, you know, the other big point is, you know, in any form of contract, but particularly when you're dealing with senior executives and there's a lot of money at stake, if you're going to terminate some early, you have to be really sure. Mm. It's a high onus. And I think the damages in this case, again, really unusual being so high, 3.7 million, and it was a whole raft of different things tied up in that. Yeah, and part of the reason that um, the employee did end up getting such a high um, award of damages was his age played a large role in it, um, that they found that it was unlikely that he was ever going to get further employment to the same standard. Um, and the, therefore the the clause in the contract that you know said that he was going to get five years was compensatory rather than a penalty because it was to compensate him for the loss that he would suffer. So it was a genuine pre-estimate of the loss the time he entered into the contract that if they terminated the contract without proper cause the loss he would suffer was quite possibly going to be never working again and not and losing all the money in the contract. Mm -hmm.